I was I mastered in philosophy, first of all, and I was interested in um, Chinese philosophy and Eastern philosophy, and so I I did a lot of re uh, things related to Chinese culture, like uh, Qigong, Tai Chi Chuan, and uh, I learned uh, Chinese traditional medicine, and and so. And in one of my the workshops, I I practiced some calligraphy, and it was like a shock for me because I love writing anyway. So, uh, but in Chinese culture, writing is an art, and it's the art. So that's how I begin with Chinese calligraphy, and then I didn't stop until I got my PhD thesis. The, the thing is, uh, my teacher once told me. Mm, uh, she, he looked at one of my work and he said, oh, you got the bone, but you don't get the sinew yet. I was like, what, what is he talking about? And so my PhD thesis is on the terminology of uh, calligraphy. We have to work a lot on uh, intercultural differences and uh, that's what makes uh, teaching Chinese uh, interesting. Uh, now I'm not teaching Chinese anymore but I'm teaching a translation from Chinese to French, uh, especially uh, based on the media and the press. Um, and we always have to deal with uh, concepts that don't exist. Especially, I've been uh, working on uh, culture, cultural matters, matters, and uh, for example, uh, there is a term in Chinese which is "jeune uh, and <coughs> uh, which in French would be like um, the spirit of human thoughts of human culture. Well, that's in English, but in French we would say. Uh, l'esprit de l'humanisme ou tout simplement l'humanisme and sometimes it's not translated very well it's it's translated translated like humanitarianism the thing is that the chinese language is very creative because the characters uh can be added like together and it's not that simple maybe linguists will say yeah but I mean it's more simple than in French and so it's very uh, easy in Chinese to to create a new term um, so so it's not not only a question of metaphors it's also a question of uh, plasticity of the language and uh, so I was uh, working lately on the uh, official discourse of uh, the Chinese president in the in the occasion of the 19th uh, Congress of the PCC and uh, about the terminology of culture and uh, we could see that the, the expressions using the, the term culture uh, could could be like that long like almost five to six characters put together, which in French is very difficult to translate. You have to use the, uh, like, qui, que, quoi, dont, ou, all the big phrases and propositions to try to convey that. We don't force students to go into terminology very deep. So we want them to have a first approach on terminology, and then uh, in the in the first year, which is in the first year of master, right? Uh, they can choose uh, terminology, terminology uh, like specialized terminology. So we go a little bit further, and then in the second year, uh, relying on what they have learned the first year, we will ask them. Uh, to uh, produce a master thesis on terminological work. That's to say that 
everything they have observed, everything they have uh, questioned, well, it will became will become a master city. They will work on it. They will go deeper in their research, and in the second year, they will link terminology with history, sociology, uh, children art. As I'm teaching terminology, as uh, and as some of my students might come and visit or might come and uh, do a trainership here, so I wanted to to be more alert uh, to, to know what you're doing here. And secondly, I wanted to understand how translators and terminologists work together. And so the thing that I liked very much here is that you're working as a team. And so I had the occasion also to go to the Greek department, I mean, unit, to the French unit. And I can see that each, uh, each unit is working as a team and term cord is like working with each of the unit. So yeah, that's really what I was looking for. I wanted to see how you are working together and you are working together. <laughs> I had been uh, using Yeti before uh, mm. uh, with my students, so and we had a lot of questions. That, that's also one of the reasons I'm here. I wanted to speak with the people using it and making it. Uh, I think it's very useful. Um, I think what, what, well, the kind of questions I had uh, mostly were answered during the, the, my this, my stay. Uh, especially regarding the stars, you know, in Yate, uh, there are some stars, like four stars, um, to, to tell pe people, like translators, uh, if the term is reliable or not, of, or not, right? So I had a lot of questions about that, and so I understood that uh, mostly we have to use the th three stars and four stars um, like terms and definitions uh, because first and second stars are not that reliable uh, because it, the terms are not frequently used because the material where the terms was uh, found um, isn't from the parliament or isn't from the institution um, yeah, so we should use the three and four stars, which means it's from the in European institutions, it's frequently used, frequently documented, uh, and it has always the same meaning. I'm really happy about using at, at YATE, and uh, but I wish the terminologists could uh, put in YATE uh, everything they think. Uh, would be uh, useful for translators.